Okay, so today we're going to be learning how to draw different types of lines. Thick lines, thin lines, crisp lines, and also watery, washy lines. So for my setup here today, I've got my five favorite brushes. I've got three of the Scepter Gold 2 Sable and Synthetic brushes in size 12, 8, and 6. And I've also got my Artist Watercolor Sable brushes in size 2 and double zero. They're all round brushes, and they're all by Winsor & Newton. I've also got my AS Artist Spectrum in Ivory Black. Um, you can grab any kind of watercolor tube that you would like. Um, doesn't have to be this particular brand or this particular color. This should work on all of them. And the same techniques will also apply with the pans. I've also got my little mason jar of water, um, just some paper towel. Not a tissue because a tissue can flake off into the brush, so we just want a paper towel because it doesn't leave any fibers. Uh, I've just got a little tray, um, you can use any kind of plastic tray just to mix our watercolors on. And then I've got my 180 GSM hot press watercolor paper. It's really important that we are using proper watercolor paper. It doesn't have to be this one, but definitely watercolor paper so that you can see how the lines actually work. and the lines are going to work really differently on different kinds of paper so whether it's rough smooth um, if it's watercolor paper or not watercolor paper can be the determining thing of whether you do get a crisp sharp line or quite a watery washy line so the first thing i'm going to do is grab my watercolor tube in ivory black and i'm just going to put a little dab squeeze some out so there's we've got our really strong pigmented liquid there. Popping the lid back on so that it doesn't dry out. I'm going to show you the first thing is with my fine tip brush. So this is going to give us a really, really nice fine line. This is the double zero size. The first thing I want to do is wet my brush and just dab it off a little bit. So the first thing I'm going to do is grab my size 8 brush and now with the different brush sizes they do carry different amounts of water. So um, the size 12 is going to carry a lot more water in the brush than say the size double zero. So I'm just going to grab one of my kind of medium sized brushes I'm going to dip that into the water and without dabbing it off at all I'm going to put some of the water on our tray. And you can see I'm not putting it where the water, where the watercolor is. I'm just putting it on the tray here so that we've got a little puddle of water. Then we can slowly bring out some of our watercolor and mix that in. I'm dabbing that off because I don't want, I had a lot of water on my brush there and I don't want to dilute the watercolor pigment too much. So now I'm just bringing it, it out bring some of the water in and this is making a kind of a gradient so we've got our rich strong black here we've got a strong black with a little bit of water that's a little bit runnier over in this side and then we've got our diluted gray over here and you can add more or less oh sorry you can add more water to this at any stage or you can add more watercolor pigment um, now I'm finding that that's dried up a little bit soaked in quite a lot so I'm going to rinse my brush here and just put a little dab on there now I've still got water on my brush so I don't want to shove it all in to the puddle there so I'm dabbing that off and then mixing it in okay that looks like a pretty good puddle of what I was looking for So the first thing I'm going to show you is with my smallest brush here. Now the smallest brush is going to carry the least amount of water and the least amount of water that you have is going to give you the finest brush stroke. However, we still need to make sure that the water is fully coating the brush because if you just have the watercolor with not enough um, viscosity, like fluid, fluid movement to then it's going to create like a dry scratchy line that can be really useful as well um, so I'll show you what I mean by that so I'm going to go into the liquidy 
black area. So not the actual little blob of paint here, but the kind of in between. If I grab our brush there, and all I'm doing is pressing down really gently. I'm barely even pressing. I'm just kind of letting the paint brush do a little drag. That's still a relatively thick line because we had a relatively thick amount on our brush. If we grab some more of the darker where the paint is and just rolling our brush, so twisting it so it's giving us a nice fine tip and then going in again so we've just got the pigment on the very end of the brush rather than covering the whole brush tip. And really again just drawing a really really pressing really lightly and you can see that's given us a really fine line. Do that once more. So just putting our paintbrush tip in the top there. You can even twist it off here. So we've got it all nice and fine. And I'm just doing little kind of sketchy strokes for this one. Now I want to show you what happens if we don't have enough water. So I'm cleaning my brush there and I'm grabbing the pigment there. And you can tell when you don't have enough water because the, the little tip of the brush kind of separates into its little pieces. So if we drew a line now, you see that's barely even coming out and when it does it's not a smooth fluid line at all and the less water that you have on the brush is the faster that the line is going to dry um, so the quicker you have to be to try and blend it out so if we've got so say for our little fine line here if we just grab a bit of water dabbing it off on the side of our little pot we could probably go through now and try and blend out that line so we've still got a sharp line but blending it a bit more kind of create a gradient but you can see with the fine brush um, that dries really fast because we don't have a lot of water okay I'll show you the same thing with the next brush the next brush is a size 2 as opposed to the size 0 um, this is going to carry more water but still we can create a fine line with this one so I'll show you if we don't have enough water on this one we're getting that really uneven smooth I mean sorry uneven kind of scratchy line and it's really really hard to work with if we went in with some water with that we probably could try and blend it a little bit more so you can see it's blended out there um, but it's still not that crisp sharp line that we want so I'm going to go into that really black area just covering the tip of my brush with the fluid I'll see if I can zoom in there so you can see how much of my brush. So you can see really nicely there that the bristles closest to my finger here, or closest to the end of the brush, are um, not filled with water or colour. And you can see that I've just dipped it in kind of one third almost. And this is not filled with a whole lot of water because you can still see really sharp, crisp and the brush holding really nicely together. If we had too much water on it, the brush would look like this. See how it doesn't look like a really nice sharp line anymore? Um, it looks like it's got a lot of water in it. There you go. You can see the difference how it's covered all the way up to the top of the bristle and the water is like almost dripping off it. Okay, so I've got all these magical lines that just appeared. Um, that's because I accidentally forgot to refocus my lens after showing you about the brush and how much water you want to have in it. Um, so I want to talk to you now about brush pressure. So the more that you press, press your brush onto the paper, the thicker the line. The less that you press your brush, say just letting the brush um, kind of glide along, as its own accord, then that's going to give you a much thinner line. 
So if we go in, dab dabbing just about the tip into the watercolour, I'm getting most of just paint, not very much water now, onto my brush tip here um, because I want it to be a really crisp line. So I'm barely pressing it all, just as soon as the brush touches the paper, that's when I'm going to drag it along. And you can see that's given us a really gorgeous straight black line. You can see at the end here we've kind of run out of water so it's gotten a little bit um, uncrisp. What we can do is just grab a little bit more and really gently kind of just try and fix that up a bit. You don't want to go over it too much because that's when the line starts looking messy. With these brushes also, the size with how much water it holds is really important because if you want to blend out that line, by using one of these brushes, it's going to put a lot of water onto the paper. And when you're working with crisp lines, you want to be working with relatively dry paper. If you're working with really, really wet paper, lines are really going to bleed out and they're not going to give you that sharp edge that you're looking for. So if I went in with this brush now, this is when I could kind of blend it out into a bit of a gradient and that's not going to distribute too much water onto our paper. You can see though because I've used the fine tip brush um, that it's dried really really fast because I don't have very much water on the brush on the so that the paint is drying quite fast. Um, I want to show you here if we grab our brush To do a slightly thicker line, you want to press the brush down up to about halfway. You don't want to press the brush all the way down and then end up bending the bristles, bristles because then that's going to give us a really messy kind of line. I'll show you what I mean here. If I press the brush all the way down, you can see how the bristles start spreading out, not um, keeping that fine kind of tip, and that's created a really messy line there. So I'm just dabbing my brush off, dabbing the water so there's not much on there. Grabbing my paint again, kind of on the top one third. And pressing barely here, and then if I press more, oh, okay, so that was my mistake then. Um, I didn't have enough water, and that can happen to anyone. So it's not the end of the world, all you have to do is grab a bit more water and just bring that stroke out, even it up a little bit. With watercolours too, you can't be 100% as precise as using a pen or a pencil um, because it is the nature of the watercolour and sometimes it's just really lovely to have the nature of the watercolour kind of do its own thing in your artwork and that is something that's really nice too. That's what gives it that extra kind of illustrative quality and that feel as opposed to using different kinds like other kinds of paints and stuff. Okay, so I'm grabbing some ink here, some watercolour, and barely touching, and then I'm pressing down about halfway. And you can see that the brush tips are not spreading out too much, but they're spreading out just enough to give us that thicker line. I'm now going to go in with my Scepter Gold 6, and I'm going to show you what a difference that it makes. Now, I usually use these three brushes for putting a lot of water on for lots of blending and not really creating lines with or sharp lines I should say but it's exactly the same principle I'm loading up kind of the top one third and you can see that what I've done here is because it is a bit thicker I've actually flattened it so that it's a tip so it's kind of like a square tip almost um, if you use that little edge that you've made that can create a really sharp line, surprisingly. Or if you use the flat edge, then that's going to give us a thicker line. And there's a couple of different ways that you can stroke your brushes. Um, you can kind of do little sketchy lines like that, or you can just draw one straight line like that. I wanna show you here 
if we have quite a bit of water, I'm just dabbing the excess off so it's not dripping, but it's still full of water. And we grab quite a bit of ink. That is a really nice, thick, bold line there. And these kinds of lines, because they do have a lot more water in them, because the brush can naturally load up with a lot more water, are really easy to blend out. So you can see how much easier that is to blend out than when we try to blend out this line here. And that's all just to do with the brush. I'm going to do the same thing for the next size here. This is the size 8. Loading up the top one third. You can see it almost made the same kind of thickness of line um, just by how much I was pressing. Same if we don't press very much, it can give us a thinner line. Still not as thick as thin as say the double zero line, um, but still a nice size. Or if we press down about three quarters of the way, that's when we're getting a thicker brush stroke. Now with the red ones here, these three. When I said with the blue ones that you don't want to press it all the way and bend the bristles, it's because they can't carry very much water, so they're not giving you that smooth line. With these red ones, because they're quite a bit larger and they do hold a lot more water, you can press them all the way down flat. Now it's not something that I do very often, but it is an option if you want to, and it's still going to give you more of a uniform line. Um, because they are carrying the water and the water mixes in with the watercolour and it gives you that smooth line. Now you can see that I've kind of run out of the black pigmented watercolour paint. Um, we're less, just left with the grey puddle and even the puddle is drying a little bit. Actually there's not very much water left. So what I'm going to do is just refill. Putting a little bit more paint there. Now I put a little bit because I know that I don't really need a lot anymore, um, but you can put more on and then if it dries you can always just re-wet it. I always like to use kind of my size 8 or my size 6 um, to mix the puddle puddles on the tray because it's not soaking with water which is this one and I don't have to dip it in a million times to transfer the water onto the tray. So this is the size that I like to use. Just making it wet around the edges, keeping that pigment really dense still. And really quite pure, not very diluted. Okay, so the last one I'll show you. I'm going to show you what I was trying to tell you about here, about using the dry brush stroke when you don't have enough water on here, how it gives you that really kind of spiky texture. Now this can be a really nice technique to use. I'm just dabbing it in here. And you can see how not even all the bristles are coated. Um, if I go like that, you can see all the lines. Grab it all. Now can you see how that can be a really nice texture to get that kind of real rough kind of quality and that's just by not using very much water. If I'm dipping it all in you can see what a huge amount of water that is carrying like a huge amount as in comparison to the other ones. So these ones I really make sure that I brush off a lot and what I tend to do is brush off maybe to about one third on the side of my little mason jar because that's going to pull the water from here down to about one the other half where I'm brushing it off and leave the water in the tip because we need that to create the uniform effect of the line. And now for this one I'm just really putting the pigment at the very top of the brush. Now I'm not sure if I got enough pigment onto that one so it's probably going to be a little bit grey. And I'm just pressing lightly there. And that's not a really bad line either. Um, I usually just use this one for loading up 
water onto the paper though and I don't use it very often. I just find that it's a little bit too big for the scale of work that I do, as in like a smaller kind of scale. Um, but that's not to say that you can't use it. Uh, everybody loves their different brushes for different techniques and it's really awesome to see everybody doing kind of different things with the brushes. So this is purely just how I have learned to use it and I am self-taught with watercolours and this is just techniques that I like to do and I wanted to share with all of you. So I've got more there and if I load it up quite a lot it gives us a really thick line. Dabbing it off and then this is really easy to blend out. because of how much water and you can see if I lifted up my paper here you can really see how much water that has deposited like it's a really huge amount um, this is another thing that I usually use this brush for is depositing water because you can just see like how much water is coming out of that brush and it's really good for making drips sometimes it can even be too much you can see that the drip is really really large um, if you were to use the size 6 and just putting a bit of water on there you can see that it makes a lot of a thinner drip I have done a video on how to do drips and also how to do blending techniques and I'll link them down both below if you're interested in watching that but I hope that this video was helpful for you gave you an idea of the line techniques um, if you have any questions I'm more than happy to answer and I'll try and get back to every single one of you in the comments and if you have been trying these techniques at home, you find that you're working or you want some advice on your illustration that you've done, um, don't forget to hashtag illustrate with Elise on Instagram and I'll see them all there. I'll also link my Instagram account down below. Thanks for watching and I hope this was really helpful and I'll see you next time.